It's time for a healthy dose of According to the Castles. And now, please welcome your hosts, Amy and Trey Castles. Hey, everyone. It's Amy Castles. Hello, hello. And we have a very special guest, Marlies Ledbetter. Hi. So thank you so much for coming in and joining us on this beautiful, fine Thursday morning. Yes. Um, So, okay. Y'all remember last week's episode, I was talking a little bit about how I learned a little bit about CBD and the endocannabinoid system. And before that, we were talking about, I think it was a few episodes before I had a breakdown about my hair and all the hair loss. Yeah. So the whole reason that we've gotten to this place with Marley sitting right here is because I posted in a group when I was in Mexico, the beginning of March, and I had basically a breakdown in Mexico. And uh, you commented, and you showed me your picture of your hair growing back mm-hmm. and told me about your collagen. Yes. So once you, you told saved me about your Mexico trip, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did because sometimes all you need is hope though. True. You know, you True. really do. Sometimes you need hope and you need a plan for anything that you're going through. Absolutely. So I, uh, I got the collagen in, I really loved it, but they also, I also knew that I would be probably referring this to people because I saw and I tasted instant like I was like this is gonna work it yeah. tastes really good I've tried a lot of collagens and but they sent me some little samples because I ordered the business kit oh yeah and I was really surprised that I could actually take the hemp extract because normally the CBD or the hemp extract that I've tried has actually bothered me mm-hmm. Give me migraines actually yes so then you offered a retreat now, okay, remember the whole TP, the TP, TP thing? Yeah. I came home and I told Trey, I She's said, responsible for this. I said, Trey, we've got to get a TP and have it for our backyard. And if the kids want to make a little business, they can set it up in people's yards. Oh my gosh, yes. It's that's it's her Stop. TP. It's her I idea. I have, I have two TPs. Well, they're good for you. <laughs> bell tents or, or yurts, um, but they're really, really well made and they're weatherproof. And See? we use them for camping mainly. Yeah. Um, we have a really huge family. And so our, our goal was to be able to take the whole family together and fit like 15 people in a tent. And how cool would that be to like show up at a national Ooh, forest yeah. somewhere with a He's gigantic it, yeah. like circus tent? Yeah. You're like, what the hell? You just, that you just <laughs> yeah. like, pulled that out of a truck and it turned into that. But we have smaller ones too. And, um, and they're really fun for events and marketing and people typically if you pull if you put it up somewhere, they want to go in the tent. They, it's just, it just natural. It just mm-hmm. draws you in. I don't yeah. know. It's in there. It is. It's yeah. so cool. So anyway, here? he totally made fun of me on that because I'm always thinking of like the business one at the ideas. Is still up. Yes, that's mine. And she reminded me that I need to go pick it up. <laughs> they have to tell it. I went to pick up Evan from New York on Sunday. And it was oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go there Saturday and, and take it down because you need like two helping hands definitely yeah. to get it down. One person cannot put up a 450 square foot tent. Oh yeah. Is that how big it is? That's how big that one is, yeah. Told you. Well, so anyway, we went to this day retreat and then I learned more and more about the endocannabinoid system. And what really intrigued me is that, okay, let me, the best example I can say is I have this little bottle of passion flower Mm -hmm. and it's a little extract. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling a little anxious or whatever, you could take this under your tongue, Mm -hmm. but you're reactive to Mm -hmm. it, right? Well, people will often use things in nature as a reactive thing. However, people have kind of treated CBD or hemp extract as a reactive mechanism and it can work that way. Sure. However, we've got to change the way we look at it and mm-hmm. look at it more as a nutrient yep. that we mm-hmm. continually keep in our body yes. and full just as we would so it's vitamin like a supplement C. that you get deficient in. It is actually. I mean that that is the basis of the endocannabinoid system is to regulate all of the systems of the body. It overrides the brain and central nervous system. So if you think about like you're about to get into a car accident, your body pumps adrenaline and all of these things happen to your nerves, your eyes dilate, your blood starts pumping faster, your cognitive skills get really quick. And then there has to be something to like counteract that to bring you back down. Right. That's kind of our stress mechanism. And we tend to be really stressed as human beings. The endocannabinoid system is the one that does the triggering and then bringing it back down. It's also what, you know, regulates our hormones and our gastrointestinal system and our thought processes like Hmm. the actual, um, you know, cognitive functions, memory, focus, clarity, like those all things that if the endocannabinoid system is out of regulation and it's not balancing the body correctly, then those things will not work. 
or things will be in lacking. And then when there's even some diseases that we've realized that are just the endocannabinoid system not sending signals properly. And when you look at it, like you've got the brain and central nervous system that you think is the boss, the endocannabinoid system is actually under that regulating those two systems. Hmm. And it's the one that nobody knows about because it's not being taught in medical school. It was um, originally found in 1994 and it has just now been put into medical textbooks in the last five years. Wow. And most people have never heard of it that are doctors yeah. or clinicians ever. They've never yeah. heard of it. So they, how would they know why CBD works or you know THC or anything made from cannabis and even mushrooms too? Why do they work the way that they do? Because it's all about balance. Is that where the microdosing is starting to become a bigger, mm -hmm. um, I guess, push? Yeah. Because it's a it's a it's a consistent dosage of mm -hmm. something that stimulates that area. Yeah. That keeps it maintained. Yeah, regulated. absolutely. I mean, microdosing is fantastic. Of course, it's not legal in Texas, but um, we see a lot of like depression and PTSD. I personally feel that. If it's done correctly, um, a mega dose with a therapist and an integrative specialist to, you know, yeah. before and after Absolutely. is the most effective because you're really, really ripping the band aid off. Um, microdosing can ten tend to be a little bit of a band aid, and well, there's got to be a lot I of help to to be doing that first and then microdosing as a maintenance. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, typically, after a large trip, you really don't go back to the way that you were before. It's yeah. like not possible. Yeah. Um, it totally changes your perspective on life. It changes the perspective of your emotions, how you feel about situations, how you feel about people, yep. how you feel about your eternity. I mean, there are huge things that happen, and a lot of times we just have to re what, what it really does is it sends a new signal to a brain patterning and so you're basically sending you're, you're creating new neurotransmitting signals in the yep. brain yeah. so instead of going to a trauma center constantly it's repathing and the same thing happens with just medicinal mushrooms doesn't have to be psilocybin it can be reishi and chaga and mitake and cordyceps um all these amazing medicinal -E dmt yeah that's another i mean outside of psychedelics well, just, <laughs> <She> was, <laughs> outside she, of psych you just went she was talking about like things that we can actually get right now yeah uh, she was in, yeah, yeah. trey went to yeah we could do a trey whole other to the podcast toad. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, toads out there jumping around yeah. so <laughs> so but Tell cannabis us. is similar to what, when you want to think about is microdosing you don't have to do large amounts for your body to get results um, you want to take a, a steady and consistent dose that we call a, ther a minimal therapeutic dose where you have the minimal effects that your body is actually changing or regulating. And it could be anything. It could be sleep. It could be stress. It could mm -hmm. be your mood. And so when I ask people, I follow up with them, how are you doing? I slept great last night. When And then they go, when do I increase my dose? You're not going to. And they're like, why? Well, because sleep is the first regulation typically that happens to stress and mood. Um, and those are the things that keep you from falling asleep. So if your body's responding to that, it's going to continue down the checklist. Like think of it as a project like manager. Domino. It It is regulating yep. all the things. And I like to use um, the Christmas tree analogy where you put up your Christmas tree every year. Let's say it like came with lights, right? And like the top is burnt out. You've got a bunch of strands that are like <laughs> yeah. blown out. One is blinking. Like why do we have colored lights on here somehow? And that's the endocannabinoid system is going to go in and figure out what fuses need to be fixed, what light bulbs need to be replaced. Do we need to change an entire strand of lights? Do we need to add more lights? Like what it's is going to regulator. make it is a diagnostic regulator and it's literally regulating everything. So instead of approaching it as I need to take it when I need it, you should be taking it before that because yeah. all of us are broken. And fortunately, we can't you know, we can we can make choices in our water, but unfortunately, our public water system is trash. Like there's so many toxins in there, the air in the tox, you know, toxins in the air, our food, you know, even the nutrients that we get in organic food is sometimes not the what we need for our bodies. And so dysregulation is happening on a consistent basis yep. all the time. And so when people go, well, I don't think I need it. Well, likely you'll need it someday. Yeah. And the best thing for you to do is use it as a preventative um, or, you know, see it as this is going to be long term. I didn't get fibromyalgia overnight. I didn't get a dysfunction it's or a slow disorder. Either way. Yeah. And people want instant results. And that's just not how it works. It is the mother of all medicines. I mean, cannabis is the one that we can root back to the very beginning of human time, really. Um, and and, and 10,000 years of history, carbon dating these uh, amazing plants. They're in they're inside sarcophaguses. Like obviously, it was so yeah. important to the Egyptians to be buried with it. 
that it was yeah. a medicine that was used for nutrition, clothes, mental, emotional, spiritual, right? And so we I have mean, to be- it was tax. It was the tax. It was their form of tax. They had to, to King Henry, right? Mm -hmm. They yeah. had to grow, grow a, it. E each person had to grow a certain amount. It really An acre. is- yeah, it was required. Of of um, now, I think it was hemp, right? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I was it's all cannabis, to a, though. A, a yeah. farmer that he was a hemp farmer, and there's just the regulations that are on cotton and hemp, and the money that's involved in each of them. Everything should derive into hemp, but mm -hmm. there's no I money agree. in it. No, and nobody wants to do it, and they've regulated it so much and mm -hmm. almost pushed it down. It's like this is not going to be talked about. We don't want this in our system. Yeah, it will completely mess up the whole money train that we got going. Oh, over sure. Here. I mean, if you look back at where it all started, like who funded the prohibition in the beginning, right? Because it was in our pharmacopoeia in 1850 to like fix a hundred different ailments, and we made paper from it. We made you know plastics. The mo Clothing. first Model T was made with hemp bumpers and sides. Um, you can so make, durable. So, so durable. I mean, like you could make a hemp. There's a there's a bill, uh, a bridge in France made of hemp, and it's like hundreds of years old. It's wow. never had to be fixed. There's there's houses made of hemp that don't need central weed, AC. Isn't it? Hemp is um, well, that's why weed. they call it weed because it grows so quickly. Yeah. Um, it doesn't need a lot of water. It doesn't need pesticides. It really doesn't need a lot of structure. It can grow in almost every, yep. um, you know, un unless it's like Arctic or desert. But in between that, hemp can grow anywhere. And hemp, we just call that hemp because it's the industrial der derivative of cannabis. But it's all cannabis. Like that's the species. We're Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. It's all cannabis. Um, mm -hmm. It's just how you grow it how you cultivate it, like you can cultivate it for CBD flower. Um, so that's going to be more bushy, like marijuana is grown. Um, and we have to stop saying marijuana, by the way. It's like super racist, honestly. It means Mary Jane in Spanish. And, and it really was a, the way that they made fun of the Mexican immigrants coming in. And so I love for us to just not use that word anymore. It should be medical cannabis, recreational or adult use cannabis or industrial cannabis. Um, and that's really how it should be um, Never heard classified. Never Listen to the cannabis. <laughs> that, and Mar Marlies is called the cannabis. Yeah, by that's the way. what they call me. So hold on, Mary, oh, Mary, yes. Mary Jane is, is. I'm sorry, marijuana is Mary Jane in Spanish. In Spanish. Yep. I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, it, I thought it, it was the legal name of the plant. No, it's cannabis. Cannabis, <laughs> cannabis, cannabis. Like if you go and and click in now, there's there's subgenomes. So like you've got cannabis sativa, cannabis uh -huh. indica, yeah. um, cannabis ruderalis, and these are different like origins and how the plant is grown but really almost everything now that's grown is a hybrid so we don't have anything that originated from the original plant thousands of years ago it's all been hybrid so when they got um, their hands on it in california and the different places that have really had cannabis regulated and, and legalized for so many years it has been genetically modified, not in the way of a GMO, but it has been bred right. differently yeah. so that the, the THC is higher. Like THC was never high in the plant, maybe five to 10% max ever in the world. And most yeah. of the stuff that you would get at a dispensary is like 25 to 35% THC, yeah, which right. in a sense has almost no medical purpose. In, the and, and THC vert side of it? Yeah, I mean, so you have certain diseases and disorders and things that THC is really good for, cancer, pain, um, sleep modulation, but then it can do the opposite and keep you up. It can give you anxiety. Um, it can make your pain worse because now yeah. you're feeling your body more. So it really has to be worked with with a clinician or, or a clinical setting so that you can figure out what your body responds to because our endocannabinoid system is making the, is, 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 is the boss, right? So what works with for someone else same genetic makeup or seemingly so she same takes issue. THC, I take THC. My cannabinoid system does something different with that through my channels mm -hmm. versus her. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like Everyone it. is very, very, very different. I'm the and type of person that I've, I've, um, am I saying this on air? I, I've smoked marijuana. I didn't inhale. It's not marijuana. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. It's cannabis. Oh, sorry, cannabis. You're welcome. Um, but no, any time that I have ever tried that, um, even the gummies. Uh, I was able to do it post surgery because that helped me instead of having to take the Vicodin. Mm -hmm. But I, other than probably the first week or two, I just can't stand it. Like it, yeah. for me, it gives me anxiety. I just yeah. don't. I don't like it. I and was, you likely I, haven't found the dose that works for you. But honestly, you don't need THC. And, I don't and I'm really it, tired yeah. of people saying like, "Oh, but it doesn't work unless you have THC." Now that's not true. It's not true. The cannabinoids will work on their own by themselves without THC. But THC binds with the neurotransmitters a certain way, so it'll actually enhance the signal of the other cannabinoids. So if you think about it as like a team, the THC is there to direct the team, but it can be in very minor amounts for it to be able to send those signals strongly. 
and not everybody needs it. Like we, I walk through people in consults and a lot of people think like, oh, if I don't have THC, or someone told me I needed to have THC to feel better. And that's not the case. I have probably 3000 clients right now with me and my team that take isolate. They, they take, or they take broad spectrum that has no THC in the product at all. And they're getting outrageous reactions. What like, about the Delta eight? Delta eight does not naturally occur in the plant period. Mm. It is a synthetic chemical process that somebody figured out where you can take the CBD flower and or the CBD and you stress it with a chemical process and it turns into Delta eight THC. Okay. Delta eight THC, Delta nine, Delta 10, these are all THCs. There's really your body well, might, you might have a different effect. Like some people will say Delta 8 is like more body and THC is like mind and body and Delta 10 is more head, but everyone's going to be different again. So right. how you process it and, and people will say like, oh, Delta 8 is like weed light. Not true. I have been so high on Delta 8 and I was really upset with the person who gave it to me because they're like, oh, you use all the time. Like it should be, you should be fine with a gummy. And for six hours, I couldn't do anything with my day. And I was really upset and I, and I thought, are you giving this to other people that yeah. have never had it? Are you telling them to cut it up into eighths? And they're like, no, I mean, this is. It comes in 250 milligrams. And if you pop that whole thing, you're just wired like an Adderall. Yeah. Now how how I mean, is that? Or, or legal. you're asleep. How yep. is that legal here? Uh, if, it's. It was it was somebody figured out there was a there was a slip through the crack like a loop that around. if if it was derived from CBD and then they did the chemical process and turned it into Delta 8 yeah. because it was derived from CBD, it's technically legal. Now, I don't think that Texas is going to really fight it anymore because we're moving towards legalization. Yeah, we're going to we're working towards federal decriminalization. I think that we're probably going to see it drop off of the controlled substances list, at least down to four or five on the controlled substances. Like it shouldn't be up there with heroin. Well, I in think Harris we all County, agree with it's that. misdemeanor in Montgomery County. You're going to jail. Right. I would say this, though, unless you're doing something outside of cannabis, that's really going to make someone want to pull you over, like driving intoxicated or, or moving product in large amounts, the police officers don't really care anymore. Right. I mean, I have yeah. I have customers that are police officers, firefighters, DEA agents, I have an FBI agent, I have a CIA agent um, that, that use products from me, and I'm not gonna say their names, obviously, mm -hmm. because they're still you know, a misnomer in the three-letter agencies, but they wouldn't be able to find those products on their drug tests list because of the way that I've been able to make sure that their urinalysis or their blood report won't show it. Because they need it, they'd rather be on that than opiates or benzos. Well, but so, but the going back to the endocannabinoid system mm -hmm. needs all of it needs cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. Which cannabinoids? There's hundreds of different. Well, you were breaking kinds. that down with like and different A's and B's and different channels and there. They, yeah, you're you messing up my mojo tree. I'm just trying to <laughs> I'm trying to help you. There's out. hundreds of different chemicals, like mm -hmm. naturally occurring chemical constituents within this plant. Yep. that have been discovered, and some that, and many that haven't. We're right. still discovering them. Yes, our body needs all of it. Mm -hmm. And that is the benefit of having, say, a broad spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Broad because spectrum or full spectrum. Because we call it the entourage effect. Yes. Where you've got the entire team at work because we don't know necessarily until somebody's on a product for a very long time what specifically the body is reacting to and what it needs more of. Um, but, you know, the endocannabinoid system is really getting people from A to B or B to C. And then we want to move into like functional nutrition, meditation, exercise, clean water, you know, making these decisions to get off pharmaceuticals because most of the pharmaceuticals we're taking are never going to heal us. Right. Um, and they're honestly going to hold us back from healing because of the side effects and the way that it changes our system. Like I just had a conversation about birth control with someone and I was like, I don't think people realize how detrimental birth control is to our body. Right. What about um, hormones like uh, testosterone and estrogen everything. blockers and Li all of that stuff? The cannabinoid system can everything. reinvigorate the mm -hmm. natural production of yep. all those things? All yep. of it. All of it. Well, okay, let's... Now you might need to fill in some gaps with different herbal supplements. Um, you know, if someone is lacking testosterone or estrogen, we want to probably send them to a hormone specialist. Um, Which would be like a Dr. Dr. Beth, Dr. Cook. Beth Cook. Yeah, to do and see, figure out why this is happening. Now, CBD or, you know, the cannabinoids are going to regulate the endocannabinoid system, but there's possibly a food or an herbal supplement that you can also fill in the gaps while this regulation is occurring because the regulation doesn't happen quickly. And a lot of times people feel really, really good right away, but mm. then there's a lot of work to still be done. I mean, yep. I had neuropathy. And I had a, a dysfunctioned leg, like where I basically couldn't walk, walk on my left leg. 
And it took a year for me to get the, my hands and feet back. And my neurologist said that would never happen. Yeah. And then I fired him because he's a liar. <laughs> I, you know what? Because he said CBD your is services stupid are no longer yeah, needed. Yeah, your services are no longer needed, sir. <laughs> people give, and I'm not, not, I'm not just saying a doctor, but anyone. People give other people too much power with their words. Yes. And they believe words that other people are speaking over them. Oh, yeah, I've heard if that happens, you'll never do this again. Or if this, you get this, you're going to die. Or just mm -hmm. like fear, fear, fear. And people just accept this and man, our bodies are so fascinating and they literally were designed perfectly. God designed mm -hmm. us perfectly to heal. Our yes. bodies want literally to almost everything heal. you can think of can be healed. All of it. Even diseases that say they have no cure. I have seen people live symptom free and technically not have that disease anymore within a couple of years that yeah. they were told they were going to die from. So I, I say like, I'm sorry, the medical community is incorrect and we don't give our bodies enough, um, enough, you know, credit for there's the, no for the ability. Well, of course there's not. Yeah. I mean, and I think we all got a really good sniff of that over the past couple years with the pandemic. Well, those that um, paid attention. Yes. Those that paid attention and those that don't, I mean, God has told us there will be sheep. This is a prayer alarm <laughs> that keeps telling me to pray. Maybe we should all sit and pray <laughs> Let's right just now. Take a moment here. <laughs> Let's take a moment. Pray to cannabis. No. You said God and then that came on. And I did. That was that was actually pretty funny. Thanks, God. <laughs> so, OK, let's give him the credit always. Dear baby Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, baby Jesus. Thank you, baby Jesus. Daddy God. Daddy, Daddy God. God. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so you're you have a story mm. and I, I hadn't heard this I, I've I've listened to some of your videos um because I originally heard you whenever Lori Gaska had you on a zoom yeah that's where I first learned and, and I would just remember thinking wow this girl is it's really smart she knows her stuff and but I never even thought to ask well, what was the story behind it what mm -hmm. brought you here yeah and tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about that gosh so um I realized that I had a very um, creative mind when I was very young. I was a professional singer and artist. and um, But I also had pr trouble concentrating. I was very emotional. And in seventh grade, they um, diagnosed me with all of these things and put me on several medications. And my creativity and who I was like almost was completely crushed. Okay. And I went through life and got the good grades and did all the things that I was supposed to do and went to college and felt that I didn't want to be on earth anymore. And I had that thought multiple times, but I'd never had those thoughts before I was medicated. And I kept telling my parents, I think these things are making me feel suicidal thoughts. And we would ask the doctor, oh no, that really doesn't happen. We just need to change her medication or put her on something new. And by the time I was in my mid twenties, I was on like 12 to 13 medications. Wow. Then I was on supplements to counteract um, side effects with those. Um, and I had been dabbling with cannabis throughout, you know, high school and college. I used it, you know, what we would call recreationally. Um, but also it helped me sleep. It helped me kind of like shut my mind off in the evenings. But you never know what you're going to get from a drug dealer on the street. And I'll just be completely honest. Like, yes, I was using cannabis illegally because I really didn't want to be taking these medications at night. I would wake sure. up groggy and mm -hmm. then I have to take something else to wake me up in the morning. And it was like this constant like uppers yeah. and downers and mood stabilizers. And and then I was on nerve blockers and all these other things and I was hallucinating. And oh, part of the wall came off. There we go. <laughs> God is like You're speaking. bringing the energy yeah, in Yeah, right. Um, and I, I think it was in 2012, it's crazy because I don't remember this entire year. I have like complete memory loss. Um, I got sick. It was like a sinus infection and the doctor gave me some medication. Well, little beknownst to me and our pharmacist that Sudafed interacts with like three of my medications. Mm -hmm. So I was for the whole week I started having seizures and I didn't know it. I would just kind of blank out during like business calls. My friends were like, hey, are you there? I fell out of my chair a couple of times and we just thought like, oh, oh she's just tired or something. And then um, one morning I woke up and um, I had a grandma seizure and I hit my head on the tub. I think I hit my head on the tub. I'm not really sure. I just woke up. My head was bleeding. Um, I felt completely out of it. And I called my husband because I had like foam all over my mouth and chest and I had urinated. And he was like, oh, my God, you had a seizure because we had a dog that had seizures. And so we kind of knew, knew what the, like what that's a seizure. Oh, my God. So he was like, OK, you need to call an ambulance. And at the time I was like, 
really worried about money. And I'm like, I'm not going to call the ambulance. We're right by the hospital. I'll just drive myself there. And I don't remember anything after getting in the car. Hmm. Then I found out later that I had swelling of the brain. They had to drill into my brain to release the swelling. Um, and after that, I couldn't form a sentence. Like I couldn't find words. I couldn't use my right hand at all. I had trouble walking. Um, I had no strength in my hips at all. Um, I had full dis, um, uh, neurological dysfunction. I was having migraines to the point where like, I had contemplated like stabbing myself in the head. Um, talk about suicidal thoughts. Like I thought yeah. every single day, if I die, what's going to happen to my daughter? What? How is she going to live the rest of her life knowing her daughter, you know, her mom took her life? So it was every day I was thinking these things. This I was started 2012. 2012. Wow. Um, and I remember it because it was right after we had had like our remarriage because my daughter was like, oh, we don't have any wedding pictures. I'm like, oh, yeah, because we like eloped. Um, so we had like a re-wedding. <laughs> and then later that year um, is when it all happened. But I think it was 2012. See, I don't even have any recollection of this until... I started going to therapy and they had me do binaural like sound therapy and um, and different like holistic approaches. And that was what was helping the most. Um, I was using cannabis at night. Um, I really couldn't work during the day. So I started using it during the day and most of my symptoms started subsiding. And it just so happened that my husband was listening to Joe Rogan, of course, and he had the Stanley brothers on who had created a um, blend of cannabis that mm -hmm. was high in CBD and low in THC. Like it couldn't get you high at all. And, um, and it helped this little girl named Charlotte Figgy who had 300 seizures a day. She had yep. Gervais syndrome. And we were, you know, he showed me the podcast. I wasn't into podcasts at the time, but I was like, you know, maybe we should look into this. If that can help, help her, because I was still having mini seizures afterwards. If it can help her, it can help me. Yeah, can't hurt. So we called our friends in Colorado. It was not legal at all in Texas. Like right, they had not passed the hemp bill yet. And um, we started taking it. And like six weeks into it, I wasn't grabbing Klonopin. I hadn't had a panic attack. My migraines were gone. Um, I was totally sleeping through the night. My anxiety was like really down to a level of tolerable amounts. Um, and I noticed that I wasn't having like zingers, like of neural, like these awful, like painful, you know, shooting things in my hands and my feet or like my ears. Um, I had like TMJ. That. I was grinding my teeth every night. So there was like, I had so many things wrong with me. Like you were so jacked many. Up, I was girl. jacked up. <laughs> and um, and it started going away. And so I started telling a couple people like, y'all, there's something you can take that's cannabis. It does not get you high. I think that this could help a lot of people. And so my husband and I started just like buying in bulk. They gave us a discount rate and we started giving it to people. And then they started feeling better. And it kept happening and happening and happening. Gave it to my dad who has PTSD from Vietnam. He had a host of issues. It was on a lot of the same drugs I was on. He got better and stopped taking his drugs. And we noticed because he had all these these full pill bottles in his, in his closet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my mom started feeling better. Her diabetic neuropathy started going away. And it was all of these things just kept happening. And it still wasn't legal here. And as soon as it legalized, I was like, I think I could possibly do this as a job. And so mm -hmm. I dove into certifications and seminars and went to basically to college for cannabis. And I was, a, I was a musician. So I didn't think that I had the mindset or knowledge, but turns out I did learn a little bit about anatomy in the ear, nose, and throat area because I was a singer. And I really understood biology and I understood the chemistry of how it works in our neurotransmitters. And everything just started making sense to me. And it was like God was just speaking to me like, I created your brain to understand this and I want you to teach other people. And so I created Indie Hemp Company to be an educational consultancy, not just to sell CBD because I figured like people are going to buy it when it comes legal and mm -hmm. they're going to probably get it from anywhere. And that's not a good idea because it's super just like not regulated. There's right. a lot of trash out there, I would say probably 90% or more of the brands out there are just total trash. It's such, it's so scary for people because it makes a bad name for cannabis, just like all of the other crap that happens right. in the OG world gives a bad name for cannabis, right? I don't walk around as a stoner, but I work full time in cannabis. And I want people to realize that cannabis is for everyone. And you've been lied to about what it does to the body, like safe for pregnancy and breastfeeding, safe for children. Mm -hmm. um, it's safe for all ages, safe for pets. Um, anybody who has a spine has an endocannabinoid system, but we were told all these things by the medical community with no backing, no clinical backing to prove that these things were as they said. 
Um, and so I was like, I need to de demystify this. And I want to start with people over 60 because they're the ones that are suffering the most and they're being pushed these, these pills. Right. Yeah. And so I started working with a lot of my mom's friends. And that was my ma main starter of my business was doing one-on-one -on -one consults, going to people's houses and bringing products and explaining how they worked and why they worked and why we needed to follow these dosing guidelines. And don't listen to your friend who takes this because you could be totally different. There's not a dose for an ailment or a disease. And how do you understand that when you come from the medical world of prescription yep. drugs where there is a dose for a disease or a disorder, right? So we have to come back and think, this is not about that. This, this is, is about regulation. System. Yeah, and healing, right? It's going to take time for your body to heal, but what you're taking now is not healing you. Right. It'll never heal you. It's, it's only, only a band-aid. And if not, and if anything, it might even make it worse. Like a lot of people start on one med, then they're on three, then they're on five, and then they have to take supplements to you know, help the side effects that they get. Um, and so I went through a lot of different brands. I tried Charlotte's Web and Lazarus, and, and there were so many brands that came out in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I they would work for a little while and then they wouldn't work. And I figured, okay, there's a lot of issues in consistency in the world. And I also had a problem with sourcing. I wanted to take some something where I knew where it was being grown. To me, I want to, you know, support farmers. I want to support the people that work so hard to put food on our table. And one of those things is hemp farmers because they took it away from them for a hundred years, basically. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to give back to those people. And I didn't want it to go, I didn't want my money to go to the conglomerate farms. Tennessee and Kentucky grew tobacco. But of course, as soon as hemp was legalized, they were like, ooh, we can make money in the cannabis industry. Yep. We should start growing it. Well, we all know that tobacco wasn't grown clean. Yep. And it takes seven years for cannabis for, for hemp to clean the soil. It's a scavenger. So it pulls everything out of the ground. It's like and a that, sponge. It's a sponge. So it actually is really good for cleaning. Um, it's used in China and Japan to clean like radioactive soil. It actually like you know, sometimes it'll take 15, 20 years for radioactive material to come out, but they can cut that down to a quarter because hemp will pull hemp that will pull all out. out. Well, guess where most of it was being imported from? <laughs> from China. Overseas. Yep. So, so who knows what was in your pocket? You could, you could get nuclear <laughs> hemp. Yeah. So when I found all this out, especially with the tobacco farms as well, using pesticides and chemicals to process their farms, I was like, there is no way possible I can stand behind a brand that doesn't have a sourcing that I agree with. And then, you know, fast forward to Green Compass three years ago, I saw what they were doing. They were all about providing quality USDA certified organic uh, hemp products or, you know, hemp wellness products to families. And they wanted something that was pure, that they felt comfortable giving their kids. And at the time I had started C Sadie on CBD and she was seven, I think, when she started. And within two weeks, we got a note home from her school saying, whatever you're doing, keep doing it is like 180 with your child. Wow. Make so she was struggling with the same things. I attention deficit. Everything. Instead of throwing a Ritalin or a Adderall down. Yes. Well, and now we've realized like cannabis and pairing mushrooms together, not psychedelic ones, but like the medicinal ones like chaga, reishi, yeah. cordyceps, lion's mane are really, really great for clarity and focus and memory and immune functions. And they help the endocannabinoid system. They work on the same receptors, but they're also nootropics. And so they will work on receptors in the brain that the endocannabinoid system doesn't directly function on. And so you pair those together and you literally have the I would call manna like I really truly believe that these were the original foods and medicines of the gods like if you ever think about it like I don't think manna was actually bread I think it was possibly mushrooms or cannabis because all are medicinal spiritual and yeah. food yeah. so those are the only two things you can think of that could possibly have nourished us completely right right I mean cannabis alone like hemp seeds are fully nutritious omega-3 6 and 9 you have yeah. fatty yeah, so fatty acids i mean mm -hmm. it's just really one of the, the perfect list goes food. on and on and in it's your shirt is made of hemp it it's is. probably so much stronger than cotton too yeah and i've only washed it once and it's getting softer every time i wash it i have another one that's white and my husband was like that looks so amazing what is yeah. that made of and it looks like linen. And it's probably really cool too huh? it is cool yeah it's uh, it honestly keeps your body cool it, it wicks moisture really well and you can make anything from hemp plastics uh, obviously beauty products, uh, mm -hmm. obviously supplements, but you can build a whole house from hemp. You can build a car from that hemp. That is crazy. I you did not know that. And That's this insane. is the what's going to be the wildest for you guys to like wrap your head around. Hemp <laughs> plastic biodegrades in a compost in 90 days. Wow. So if we actually heck? changed Why? all the Why plastics in the world to hemp and created a composting program in the United States, like let's say Starbucks got on board with this. One of the biggest pollutants in the world is Starbucks plastic. 
And they had this whole problem with straws. Well, guess what? If you put it into a compost, we wouldn't have any straws or plastic lids or water bottles showing up in our oceans. And it's on the politicians to understand and be educated about this. And I will have no problem going to the Senate floor and talking about this because they need to hear from, number one, someone who's professional and educated, and number two, somebody who's willing to stand up for the plant. Um, because we, as a people, <laughs> thank you. You just took we that as, to a whole nother level. I know. <laughs> so, right, so like take CBD out of it. We could literally change the pollution problem of plastics <laughs> in our world overnight. Just from him. They should have done, done the stupid face masks uh, with hemp. True. Like how, how great. And then we could have put them in compost. We could have had compost yes. sitting outside of everything. All you have I to do see is, those laying around like the plastic yeah. these, or the blue surgeon, Ugh. whatever face masks. And they're just polluting Which up. most of them are toxic because they're treated with chemicals. I know. And so I you're can't. breathing those so in. Those, I can't those wear those. Can't, those blue ones. I, the blue ones. Oh I get God. a migraine Plus, from those. surgical masks, it literally says on the box, does not help stop viruses. <laughs> like it says it on the box for surgical masks. So I, yeah, I know. anyways, that's, that's a whole, a whole other. other yeah. that's a whole, that's a, but, <laughs> but that one, that's the biggest thing that bothers me is that outside of CBD, cannabis overall is such a diverse plant that can yeah. do literally a thousand things for us. Like feed us, clothe us. Yeah make bedding build from, build houses, uh, you know, create our susta- a sustainable living. Um, and when we like take the recreational part out of it, right, there are going to be people that will abuse anything that's put in front anything. of them. Yep. But when you look at the statistics right, for Trey. cannabis, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. when you look at statistics, um, 6% of people are addicted to cannabis. It's only 6%. But of those 6%, 90% started before the age of 18. Now, what happens as a child is when your brain isn't fully developed, you have to learn coping mechanisms. And so when something traumatic happens or something is very upsetting, our body has these learned behaviors so that we know how to settle ourselves down, which is the endocannabinoid system, balancing our mood and all yeah. of these things. And when we're in dysfunction, which is very typical, kids aren't, nutri- you know, they don't they don't have nutritious food. They have, you know, bad quality of life with, um, you know, domestic violence. There's all kinds of things that happen. And that those kids are going to go to cannabis to use it as an escape. And then what happens, it's not a gateway. You don't just use cannabis and then go, oh, I should inject heroin into my veins. Like a lot of people never progress past that. But let's say somebody didn't go through therapy and work through the traumas or their issues as a kid and they used cannabis so they didn't develop good coping mechanisms. When they're in their 20s or 30s, guess what they're going to continue to do? Use alcohol and pills and go to other things that will give them that escape, whatever they can get their hands on. But if that's 90% of 6%, we're talking about we do not have a system that is taking care of our children who have been traumatized, mostly foster kids, right? You look at the statistics of people that are actually addicted and hands down, every single person I've ever heard of, you know, quote unquote, be addicted to marijuana that I hear it all the time, like, oh, my uncle or this and that. And I'm like, did something traumatic happen in their life? And they're like, oh, yeah, their dad died or like blah, 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 committed suicide. Well, then they never truly went through the trauma of what happened to them. And therefore, they used it as a coping mechanism. And so when we get to the root of that, it's really, really beautiful for us to understand like how important it is for us to all learn how to support each other. Um, Because you can't rely on a plant to take you to another sphere and and fix your problems. That's why psilocybin is so effective is because when you're on a journey, and we call it journeys or therapeutic journeys, um, when you're in it, you're pulling every emotion that you ever shoved down. Let's, you know, how we say like our emotional backpack, by the time you're in your 30s, you have an 18-wheeler behind you that you just have shoved and shoved Mm -hmm. and shoved. And guess what happens when you're on psilocybin or DMT or any of these other psychedelics? It opens up all of that. And the traumas, now you don't relive the traumas, but you are but you go through emotions you've shoved down for so long, for six, you know, six or so hours. But then once that emotion is released, a lot of times you don't ever feel that way about that feeling or that emotion that or that trauma. Shut. The door yeah, is shut. It's, it's literally been burned up and resolved. Yeah. And it may take six months for you to realize that. And then you notice I'm different at work. I have different relationships now. I see the world differently. And, and if we can put together therapeutic uh, centers for that to happen and legalize it in Texas, we could really see people's depression cured. Yeah. Um, and, and then using CBD and but, cannabis as a precursor yep. and, and continue to give it. fundamental outline of the basis. It of. is. It's the fundamental outline. And then we can pair in other therapeutics to, um, to help. And it's not going to be for everyone. Bipolar disorder, 
severe mental issues should never take psychedelics. And honestly, they should not even use THC because again, it creates improper coping mechanisms. They need to do it in a therapeutic setting. They need to do it with a therapist or a shaman or somebody who is very, very well educated and has thousands of practicing hours with people that have have these issues. Um, and that's where microdosing comes in. Like they can't take a therapeutic dose. So they need to take a microdose so that they can get their systems regulated and maybe look at it in the future. But we have to make sure that we're looking at people and, and understanding what they've been through so that we can make the appropriate choices, which is why a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me or my team has been so useful because people are like, I didn't know this is what CBD does. I didn't know what the endocannabinoid system was. I didn't know that my body could heal. All right. So speaking of that, so we've we've gone down a lot of Roads. amazing <laughs> rabbit holes and I'm intrigued. I'm very interested because um, I've struggled with my own journey and I've done a lot of things to, to fix that. But um, we got about five minutes left here. So if, if somebody wanted to do an individual consult or meet with your team, yes. how, how, let, let's say, say for me, for instance, sure. what, what do I need to do? So my website, um, Indie Hemp Co, I-N-D-I-E-H-E-M-P-C-O. Say is that again real slow. <laughs> Indie <laughs> Hemp Company. Okay. So it's I-N-D-I-E-H-E-M-P-C-O.com. Got it. We would have called it something different, but unfortunately, then I wouldn't be able to like run a business <laughs> it would be probably an indie can cannabis company um and you can book a consult right there so the first thing that pops up is schedule a consultation is it, is it zoom is it we um, can do in person zoom phone i don't have to see someone because i'm not a diagnostician so i'm not trying to tell them what they have wrong with them what i'm trying to do is look at their symptoms their mood their overall well-being and, and make suggestions around that. And then they know we're going to probably have to do four follow-ups, which is included in the consultation. And we're going to see about how you're dosing, how your product or the product is working in your body. Do you feel better? Do you feel worse? A lot of people will feel worse before they're better. If they have a lot of inflammation, that can typically happen like mm -hmm. diarrhea, headache, acid reflux. There's a lot of things that have to be stabilized before they get better. And sometimes that's a good indicator that we need to pro probably like maybe maybe change our nutrition or our water intake so it's, and it's things a, like it's that. It's a Q&A. You and I would have a conversation. Yeah. I'd tell mm -hmm. you a little bit about me and my journey and where I'm at. And yep. then you could then start recommending from there products that I would start taking. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And the recommendations change over time. Usually your body will change every six months. Um, but we recommend people be on the product for, for at least six weeks. Um, but really, the big changes happen around 90 days because of the way that our cellular like death and, bir and birth and, and how our bodies change their behaviors mm -hmm. take about six weeks yeah. to even start that happening. Right. So it's it's pretty in depth. Um, mm -hmm. And I try to tra um, train people as well. So those that are interested in getting into this industry, I teach them how to run the business, how to do an effective consult, follow up skills, um, you know, how to grow a team, because I really want very effective people to be in this industry that are doing good for society versus people just peddling um, ways to get high. I don't agree with that. Um, there's a time and a place for it. Is it is it more you know is it more safe than alcohol? Absolutely. I think a lot of people are starting to tra you know change the way they look at alcohol. But we have to make sure that we look at everyone as a very specific individual sure. because everyone will need something different. And if I can't give them what they need, then I'll find the resources to do that, which is compassionate use program, medical marijuana, which is the technical term that they use, right. and so many other things. They might need a better therapist. They might need a functional nutritionist. They might need their hormones checked. Yeah. There's all these things. And so I have this huge team in place of like holistic practitioners that are my go-tos that they refer me and I refer them. And we really actually treat together. And yeah. they know that the endocannabinoid system now is kind of the basis. I take them from A to B or B to C, and they take them the rest of the way. So yeah. they might not always be on my cool. product, but I got them out of a place of pain. Yeah. Whether it's yeah, emotional because, or physical. Because things are going to be different. I mean, well, Green Compass has the gummies, the, their nano extracted hemp gummies, mm -hmm. which are going to be great for me because I'm just trying to get cannabinoids in my system. Yes. So I, I don't have uh, any emotional issues or anxiety or chronic pain. Mm -hmm. It's just fixed, the huh? I'm I'm perfect. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But someone like Trey, he has he's got pain all the problems. In the morning, and <laughs> I'm right there know. with you. I still have problems. <laughs> oh yeah, y'all's personalities Jeez. are very similar. I guarantee it. So, uh, so he would benefit more from like a CBDA as well as adding in a hemp uh, yes. or a gummy as well. Now, THC. Huh. 
What? No, you don't need <laughs> THC, Trey. You, I mean, there can be a time and a place for it. We'll have see, to figure out all the things that my you... My doctor said there's a time and a place. <laughs> Dr. Cannabis. <laughs> so, I could go for that. But, but there are different products that are available and have, they all have a different purpose. Mm -hmm. But I think it's people, it's important for people to understand that when you are just going into these... CB, they're just, you know, CBD little shop, chop shops. It's there crap. is no it's regulation trash. in this mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, there's, like you said, the Delta 8 that's, oh, you know, people are just giving this stuff out to people and it's synthetic. I gave it to Trey mm -hmm. and he could not sleep all I night long. It was, yeah. like it was terrible for him. And there's a way to, to produce it organically and there's a different way to do it, but then it's technically not legal. Yeah. But <laughs> but even just saying it's synthetic, I want something, if God put something on this earth for us, then I would rather do that mm -hmm. than try to manipulate something. So, yeah. if, And that's going to always be indicative of the industry. They're going to try to manipulate yeah. cannabinoids because people do want to get high. And, um, and it's just been a misnomer of the industry for so, so long. The OGs continuously fight with me on it. What's but the OGs? The original gangsters of cannabis. Oh, I thought it was I OGs. Thought OG, okay, I always get the now. originals. Because yeah. I thought OG meant old guy. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. no, no. A, I know. Okay, OG okay, means okay. originals usually. Okay. But um, I think everyone needs to see that you can be healthy without the high. And would you want to use these products, you know, adult use recreationally? Absolutely. They're super fun. Um, you can have a great party with them, but I also teach people how to use it responsibly. Um, set and setting is really important. That's that Green Compass has. Oh, gosh, no. No, this yeah. is just as indie, you know, because we are a national consultancy. I okay. have people in legal states or people that are going out to a legal state. So they might go to Colorado and say, hey, I want to stop in a dispensary and I want to have some fun. I don't want to drink. What can I look for? And I can say, OK, well, you're just starting out. We probably want to start with like two milligrams. You want to have a good CBD on hand to counteract the THC. If you do get too high, you want to have these foods available to enhance the experience. Um, there's foods that actually pair, pair with cannabis. Well, it's a really, it's, yeah. if you do it right, it can be beautiful. If you do it for the wrong intentions, the cannabis plant will teach you a lesson, which we found a lot of times people are like, I took it. I got super high. I did it at a party. I mean, same, same with psilocybin. I hear it all the time. Like I had a bad trip. Yeah, sure you did. Cause you did it dumb. Like be smart. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons because God has a way of putting us in check when we abuse things that he made for medicinal and spiritual reasons. Agreed. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> um, okay. Last question. There is a hemp, hemp, just talking about the products offered from Green Compass, mm -hmm. there's a hemp extract. Yep. That's a liquid tincture, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's CBD, but because of FDA regulations, we have to say hemp flower extract versus okay. CBD. Otherwise, we can get shut down. Okay, so that is an isolated CBD. So like, we have three types. We have isolated CBD, we have broad spectrum CBD, which has multiple cannabinoids and terpenes without THC, and then full spectrum will have your full array, a uh, little bit of raw cannabinoids, um, terpenes, and flavonoids. Um, and then we also make edibles. So they're nano amplified, like you said. They work really quickly. They have a 90% absorption. So you're not having to wait for it to go through your gastro and your yeah. liver to get effects. It goes right into the bloodstream very quickly. Uh, we have topicals, which are super effective. So anybody who says like a topical doesn't work because it doesn't go absorb. Well, you have cell receptors on your skin. And so they send signals to your tissue, muscle, bone, nerve. And so if you put it on your elbow, it's actually going to respond to the cell receptors in your bone. So topicals are super effective when you're taking it internally and externally and you're hitting it from both sides. You're hitting multiple receptor systems. And then you have different things like T or CBDA, which is really popular right now, which is a, a serotonin regulator. Um, so a lot of people use it while they're in cancer treatments. And it's also known to kill cancer cells um, and reduce like the, the wrong types of cells, so like tumor cells or um, wrong growth. And then there have been studies also where um, – these products have been helpful in viral replication. I mean, I don't want to make any claims right now, but we probably know, you know, if you look into it, just Google CBDA, everyone. Yeah. Just Google CBDA. Okay. But these, all the things that I'm talking well, that's about. That's what I ordered for Trey. Not indicative of what Green Compass does. This is just clinical data. So it's very, very easy for you to go to the National Institute of Health, projectcbd.org. Mm -hmm. Send me one of each. Yeah. <laughs> But they're great. I mean, CBDA has and been of course, and we've the talked, happy juice. Now, we talked about uh, mushrooms. We were talking about, you know, the medicinal, the stuff like that's, you know, grown. You can buy farmer's markets. There's mm -hmm. good brands um, online that you can get yep. for um, uh, And we have them in our edelberry. Our yeah. elderberry gummies have three types of mushrooms. Our pain booster has chaga mushroom. Oh, I got the lemon um, 
the it's lemon. okay. You can switch to the, the other okay. one next time. But uh, but the the collagen that I got. The collagen that has is amazing. mushrooms in it, right? No, that one has olive leaf extract, which oh, is a super antioxidant. Okay. Um, but it has CBG, which is more of an energy cannabinoid. In it's the, known to give energy. Oh, so a lot of okay. people that take it in the morning are like, I don't have to drink my coffee. Um, and then collagen. CBG is okay. known for skin inflammation as well. Okay. All right. I'm excited for that collagen to kick in. I think my hair's like starting to fill out. What do you think? I think it's beautiful. I'm just going to okay. take a little while. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's working. Okay. But a lot of people will take it that have like um, have been in accidents and their and their back yep. was messed up. And so yep. they're feeling it yeah. because it does work in the all the connective tissue. I'm ready so for my skin to look better because I do not want to Usually six weeks. Typically we yeah. tell people because that's like the skin turnover. I know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all about just finding things that, that will work for you, finding the things that your body reacts to, and then continuing to be consistent and committed. Like those are the two things the the two C's you have to be committed to the product. You have to think that it's going to work. The placebo effect is real. Our bodies are much more strong. Our minds are stronger than anyone can give credit to. So if you believe it's not going to work, it's not going to work. I mean, it is what it is. And then you have to be consistent. Take it twice a day, every single day when you first start out. And then as your body starts replenishing cannabinoids and balancing the system. You can cut down to one time a day. But you might need to take it for the rest of your life. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because you have to see you're probably going to cut down on different supplements and prescription drugs. Yep. And your cost of you know being happy and healthy will go down. So um, it's a really good choice to look at uh, cannabis and CBD as an opportunity to actually heal your body. Awesome. I love it. Okay, thank you so much. You're so that was so informative. I'm going to listen to this episode probably three times to <laughs> absorb everything. And uh, thank you, thank you for joining us. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of According to the Castles with Amy and Trey. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. To stay up to date with the castles, follow Amy on Instagram at acastles. Until next time, have faith, enjoy life, and love abundantly.